Anyhow, uh, well, 5.1. Here's the study of how to apply some integrals to real life stuff, real life functions. In 5.1, what we're going to discuss is how to find the area between two curves. It's not difficult. It, it really isn't. Uh, I'll show you that actually we've been doing this the whole time. It's just we have this very special second curve, and I'll show you that right now. So 5.1, we're going to talk about the area between two cur curves. Here's the idea. Let's say that for some given interval, you have one function that's above another function. So here's our typical, what I always like to draw for my f of x. And here's some other function g of x. Would you agree that according to this graph, f of x is always above g of x for a given interval. And let's define that interval from a to b like we normally do. So from a to b, f of x is completely on top of g of x. Now what we want to talk about is the area between f of x and g of x. That's what we're trying to find. You see, we already know how to find the area under f of x, right? And we know how to find the area under g of x. We're talking about the area between them. How would you go about doing it? Give me some ideas. What would you do? Go ahead. Find the area of f of x and then subtract the area of g of x. That might seem logical, right? Because we have. This whole area that's great. That's the area under f of x, true? And this area which is g of x, well shoot, if I subtract them, aren't I gonna get aren't I gonna get is that even the way you say that? Aren't I gonna get? <laughs> Sounds right to me. I don't care. <laughs> Am I not going to get the area between those two curves? Yes. I hope so, yeah. It says take this area, subtract that area. It's basically like finding the, the uh, difference between two numbers. right? You, you take the large one, subtract out the small one. In this case, we take the upper function. That is definitely going to have more area since it's always above g of x. Subtract the area under g of x. That's going to have less area. We're going to get a positive area. That will be the area between two curves. Let me make this statement for you. If you're finding the area between two curves, it will always be positive. If you have a negative area, you've done something wrong. Okay, your area will be positive. So we're finding an actual definite integral between two curves. Do you understand the, the difference between what we're doing before? This is no longer net signed area because of the way we're going to set it up. We're always going to have the top function above the bottom function. We're always going to have more area and getting rid of less area. So we're going to have something that's definitely positive. It'll still work. Mm -hmm. Still positive. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Subtract, the, the, the function on top would have a negative area. This would have more negative area. You're subtracting more negative area. That would become positive area. Did you get the idea? It's kind of cool. No matter, how, no matter what, it's going to be a positive area. <clears throat> so the idea was, I liked how it was said. Take the area under f of x and subtract the area under g of x. That's what we're going to do. No problem. Now can we do it with integrals? What's the area under f of x represented as? How do you represent the area under f of x as, a, as an integral? How would you do it here? OK. Would you say it again, that louder integral from where to where? From a to b of dx. Sure. Hopefully you can see that that's the area under f of x from a to b, right? Well, at least that's what I told you it was, and that's how we've been working with this thing this whole time. So we have the area under f of x, great minus the area under g of x. What's the area under g of x? 
Wait, you're telling me it's the same A to B? Oh, that's cool. So would you say that that's the area under f of x minus the area under g of x, and that's going to give us the area between those two curves? And that's exactly what it's going to give you. Now, why is this so nice? I made a statement just a second ago. You mean it's from the same A to B? Because the intervals are breaking apart. You could break it apart, but also, what do you know about two integrals that are from A to B and A to B? What can you do with those things? Solve them and subtract. You could, you could do that. That's one way to do it. Or you can combine them. Sometimes it's very much beneficial to combine them. Notice that those were not one-way street uh, properties. They went both ways. Not only could you, could you split up an integral by subtraction and addition, you could also put them together by addition and subtraction, provided they have the same bounds of integration, which this has to have if you're going to find the area between them. So you can do it this way. Do an integral, do an integral, and find both of them. However, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it's nice to put them together because you have like like terms. You have common things. You can put them together and, and do that. So, other way you can see it. Just like that. That's the area between two curves. Just make one big note here. Please make this note. In order for this to work properly, in order for this exact thing to work proper, properly, what do you know about f of x and g of x? The bounds are the same. That has to happen. Very good. Secondly, though, say what? It is non-negative. It will be positive. Very good. In order for it to be non-negative, though, what do you know about f of x compared to g of x is what I'm trying to get to. What now? has to be greater for all x. Sure. f of x must be greater than, or which means on top of. f of x has to be the higher function in order for this to work. Does that make sense? So you have to have your higher function first. Otherwise, you're going to have this reverse situation. You take a bigger area from a smaller area, it's going to end up being negative. You get negative of what you actually want. So in order for this to work, this note says, that f of x must be bigger than or equal to, it could come down and touch it, okay? It could do that as long as it maintains the, the property of being bigger than afterwards. So this is possible. Here's g of x, here's f of x. That could happen if this is f of x and that's g of x. That would be fine between here and here. f of x is still on top of or equal to, it wouldn't make a difference. Do you follow me on that? The problem, you know, maybe I'll use different colors so you can see it. That would be okay. Perfect. The problem would be this. Why would that be a problem? Okay, so the, the purple line is on top of the black line here, but the black line is on top of the purple line here. That would be an issue because one of them is not continually above the other one for that whole interval. So for this to work, for this to work, by the way, this would be the case. This would be, if you just did it the way it was, f of x over g of x, it would be the case of net signed area. This would be positive, that would be negative, it would cancel it out. Okay, it would be gone. You get it? So for this to work properly, for the, to get the total area, which is what we are looking for, what you must have is f of x greater than or equal to g of x. For all x in a to b. That little e, that's like an element, says x is a part of that interval. In layman's terms, this says f of x is above g of x for the whole interval. Did you understand the concept that if f of x is not on top of g of x the whole time, if it does this, 
then this area would be probably positive, but this area would be negative, and it would, it would get rid of some of the positive area that you're looking for. So basically, we're looking for the total area. Notice that we have done this the whole time. We really have. Here's why we've done this the whole time. When I ask you to find the area under a curve, what you've interpreted that as is the area between f of x and what? The x-axis. The equation for the x-axis is? Y equals zero. Y equals zero. Y equals zero. Yeah. Y equals zero. So the integral really was a to b of f of x dx. However, think about it. It was really zero because that was a second function. We've always been finding the area between two curves. The second curve was just the x-axis. x-axis has an equation of zero, y equals zero. So you, you were subtracting zero from it, which is why we didn't show it. Also, this means that when we went below, when we went below the x-axis, is why, I gave you that picture just a second ago, is why those areas eliminated each other. Because one is positive, one is negative, because the, the function flip-flopped what was on top and what was on bottom. Does that make sense to you? So basically, this would have to be written for total area as this function on top and zero on the bottom. And then this function on top, and the, or zero on top, and, and the, the function on the bottom, which is what gave you that negative from the absolute value to begin with. You remember the absolute value? Mm -hmm. Basically, you could do it this way. If this is C, and this is A, and this is B, where that happens to be, you could go, okay, from A to C of f of x minus zero, plus C to B of zero minus f of x. Yes, no? That says keep the top function on the top. Here's the top from A to C, f of x minus zero for the x-axis. Here is from c to b, great. Zero is on the top, the function's on the bottom. Notice how what this actually does here is gives you this relationship that we got exactly the same thing from absolute value, exactly the same thing. This gave you some integral f of x. Look what would happen. Zero minus f of x is negative. Pull out the negative, minus c to b f of x dx. It subtracted the negative area, making it a positive area. It changed the sign on it. And that's what absolute value would do as well. Do you see the connection between the absolute value, the way we did that for total, total area, and now the idea of area between two curves? Do you see the, the connection? If you don't, that's OK, but I need to know. Are there questions on it? So absolute value said, hey, just take the area and make it positive. Great. It works the same way. But area between two curves says, hey, Think of it as two curves. Think of this as one curve, but think of the x-axis as another curve. Then the area between two curves become to, it becomes the idea of total area. It says you take this function on top of that function for this interval, no problem. And you add to it this function, zero, on top of this function for this interval. And that's going to make it positive. That's going to keep, come up with total area the same exact way. So area of two curves and total area are the same. Do you see it now? That's kind of cool, right? So now we have two ways to approach that. I would suggest that this is probably the easier way to approach that if you know the x-intercept. That's probably easier than absolute value because you have to think of that. Uh, but either way is not too, too difficult. Now, we have done no examples. Would you like one? All right. Did you understand everything we've talked about so far? Yeah. Yeah? Are there questions?